It's very cool. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up. I'm kidding. Yeah, peace. I love peace. I'll be out of a job with peace. Come on. Come on. Just click it. Don't change any settings. <clears throat> 2008 was a long time ago and I'm gonna learn my lesson and I'm going to mix in this microphone not just rely on those uh, Dayton Ultimax I bought that a while ago the kit I built it a while ago and no one's not even once asked me to review it I mean it's just I assume no one cared so I just didn't for a long time so now here we are take these off for a sec It's a sealed box, 15 inch, and it came with everything you see down here, not this, for like $250. I think I paid $256 for it. That's a damn good price. I mean, it's a 15 inch sealed subwoofer. There's a 15 inch ported subwoofer. I reviewed the 15 inch PSA sealed subwoofer. I think that was like seven or $900. So $250, but you're not, you're not getting you know, a subwoofer, you're getting a subwoofer, but you can't power it. The big issue I had when I got it, and I can pull this out now, I think. Come on, baby doll. Oh, tight. Ugh. Was it needed an amplifier? Okay. So I ended up buying the Crown XLS 1502. I could have bought the 1002. I could have bought an older model. And now, no, let's just do it. So I, uh, I built this. There's a whole two-hour video, link in the description of this video, of me building this, gluing it together, no screws, no, just glue. Glue and strap wrenches and just clamps and just clamp it. Big friggin' box. Solid. I would park my car on top of this. I promise you it wouldn't fail. What they don't give you is anything after the box. So I decided that I was going to go with a, a Nutrix connector, one of these. The Speak On NL4FX. Now, you don't need to go with the four conductor one. I did that simply because I wanted to just bring the, because it's dual two ohm voice coils on the driver. Hi, driver. I think that's cat snot, by the way. Chewbacca has taken a shining to this. So you get two sets of terminals in the back of the magnet, and it's up to you, and you deal. I also did have to buy the stuffing for the inside of this, and I ended up using the two old pillows that ripped them apart and shoved it in there because it's the same as buying the, the stuffing. Because you need like five pounds of stuffing, and that shit's expensive when you say, oh, it's for speakers. If you say it's for dolls, it's real cheap. Okay, so you get four, four conductors in the back of the driver, and what most people will do, and what I'm going to tell you to do, is you take the positive on one and the negative on another, and you bridge them across, and then you use the other two, and you feed in so that you have, instead of having two two ohm loads, you combine it to now have one four ohm load, which is what this amp is seeing. I just went all anal and I, I put all four wires from the driver back to this as a four pole. And then all my mixing and matching and twisting and tying together is all done in the wire itself that I built. It's actually under in here. And this, crown amplifier is pushing right now 1500 watts 1500 watts that's a lot of watts and that's what it needs because my little Behringer's there 
And I say little, but uh, bridge mono that's supposed to be 600 watts into 8 ohm could not make this go properly. And this needs uh, no introduction. So 1500 watts. Here's my line in from the receiver over there. I have a very long RCA cable that comes all the way over. Goes to this. Uh, nothing else is plugged in except for power and the other end of the speak on. And it's plugged into the stereo. And I actually have the low pass filter enabled on this because one of the nice things about the crown amplifier is that you can go through the menu and you could set it up as a full range, just high pass, just low pass. Do you want to do dual one input bridge? You want to do bridge, mo it's in bridge mono and low pass is enabled. And you really don't need to do the low pass enabling if you have a good enough receiver because that's where you set like, all right, 80 and below, you. 80 and above, nothing, nothing to you. But I put it on anyway. Now, this son of a bitch is heavy. So I'm not going to be wielding it like a swordsman right now. Now the amp, we could actually... Oh, I'm going to ruin my perfect... My perfect little world is going to get ruined right now. Because I get to do this. Blah. And there we go. Well, I wrapped this twice. Man, I'm anal. There we go. This is one of the benefits of building your own subwoofer. Because when you buy a subwoofer, here are the Martin Logan Dynamos, there are the amplifiers built into the back. That means wherever you put this, you need power and you need signal. However, when you build your own, there's no amp. I mean, you can buy plate amps. You could cut out a hole. You get a router, cut this out, put a plate amp just like that, just like every other subwoofer. But look at look at this look at this look at this see there's the amplifier way over the fuck over there and here's the subwoofer and if i back up and I do tony stark actually we're done with tony stark let's find something else groundhog day fucking great league of extraordinary gentlemen nobody loves that movie i do it goes fury couple couple tank explosions <laughs> Go boys, go boys! Quick, 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 come on now. Light them up! We're white! Shut up, front channels. But now we've got... Where's the song for sound best? Is sound best there? I mean, it's on top of my man's head, so I just put it right next to this goddamn... Here, microphones. You wanna know what this sounds like? This is a benefit. The only subwoofers that I know of that come completely with a separate amplifier are the Home Theater Directs 10s and 12s. The Home Theater Direct 10s and 12s basically come with a little ice power amplifier. It's a little tiny thing. It looks like, a, it looks like one of these. It actually looks exactly that size. And it's just RCA in, a big heavy duty speaker cable out, and you put the subwoofer wherever the fuck you want. You know how easy this makes placement? I could rack mount that amp. If I were keeping this, and I've already agreed to sell it to my friend because as much as I'd love to have a collection of subwoofers as grand as my collection of headphones and speakers, uh, <laughs> life doesn't work that way. Unless you have a mortgage and no neighbors. But I'm selling this to my friend. I paid 250 for it. He'll pay 200 for it and it's assembled. And at least I'll know if I ever needed to get it back and be like, yo, buddy, can I have that sub back for a bit? Yeah, mm-hmm. And he's gonna buy the amp because I'm keeping that. This is a benefit. This. You rack mount the power for it. Uh, Dayton's also sells a specific subwoofer power <clears throat> supply, power amplifier, with all the adjustments you'd find in the back of a normal power amplifier on a plate amp. You got your frequency, you got your gain, you got your phase, boom. Also, what you don't see is back here, this little black box is intersecting from my receiver into the mini DSP and then out to that amplifier. So the way this is currently hooked up, the receiver is a Tascam. I don't use the microphone calibration on those. Uh, I just, just in general, if I don't really find a problem, I just skip it. A lot of people swear by it. Odyssey, we need, we need audacity needs to run and you have to seven position audacity. And I always find that if I do that whole process, 
it just dulls the experience for the singular user. And over here, pretty much all day, I'm a singular user. So I don't run that. But, and I will get to it when I review the Mini DSP and the Mini DSP HD, what this is now doing is it's outputting, it's limited to whatever, I think 90 hertz is the low pass filter on this. Goes into the Mini DSP. Mini DSP comes up and I can run all sorts of corrections and room nodes and bumps and lulls and everything before I send it to that amplifier. Then that amplifier has got a low pass just to make sure nothing stupid's happening above 100 hertz and into this. So it's a big, long chain of events. And it's great because of this. Because if, if I took my rhythmic out of the corner and I wanted to put it here in the middle of the fucking room and play something, I have to get an extension cord for the power. And then I got to get my RCA, which is running signal, low level signal. RCA is low level signal. And I have to extend it. It's bad enough that it's already going down, over, over, completely over, over, and then there which is like 30 something feet. It's an 18 foot room. That's at least 10 feet of shit to get back up to. So, I mean, there's already too much signal length, but with power, like actual like speaker cable, I could run this 300 feet if it was the right gauge, which you'd need about 10 gauge for that. So don't do that. But this, look at the, uh, 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 and there's a, uh, I'll link to the speak ons because again, you're not, you're not given that part of the, box I, I took a little tiny look how small the hole I had to drill is like a 5 8 hole pop that in there wired to it we're done we're, we're good we're good we're get you going all right let's uh I'm gonna have to switch over to music at some point so at least one more movie uh you want me to talk about how the sub behaves it's dumb but you got to keep in mind it's a 250 look this cost me 250 dollars plus 12 dollars for the speak on plus another 15 dollars for both ends of the speak on then i needed the cable which is a four conductor 12 gauge actually it's a four conductor 16 gauge which is you know more money and then that fucking amplifier which i think is at least you could probably do the 1000 that's the 1500 that's a 350 dollar amplifier so oh you can get this sub for 300 bucks zios no you can't you have to get this sub for 250 plus 350 so now it's a $600 fucking subwoofer. And I'll say this much, if SVS sold it, this would not cost $650. This would cost you seven, dollars $800. So yeah, you are getting by. You are completely getting by over just going to a, a, you know, a company and saying, sell me a sealed subwoofer. Oh, we'll talk about how it's sealed now, but I'm going to add that thing and it's not going to be sealed when I actually review it. Or finish reviewing it. Haven't seen X Men Apocalypse. Is it any good? What's happened to Grand Torino? Haven't seen Ant Man. That's got some good scenes. Let me see what this says about. Where's the bathtub? Bathtub is like. Boom. So now I've got the rear channels on. I've got the subwoofer on. I got the front channels off because. Pretty sure copyright matches happen with that. Ooh. See now, here's another thing. The reason I set up the mics here in this spot is because that's the sweet spot of the room. So I really should shove the subwoofer back in there. <laughs> this is a normal Saturday for me. Oh, hot date.
it's not ported. Sealed subs have always maintained in my mind it's better for music. There's a reason for that. When you put a hole in the subwoofer, that means when the driver goes out, it's like it breathes, it breathes with it. It can go fucking longer and deeper and slower. When you seal it, when you encapsulate it and say, the air in this box is not escaping. You're just squeezing it. It is getting tighter and then you're gonna try to push out and it's gonna, it's gonna try to, uh, you're gonna cause a vacuum. It is locked in place, right where it is, right where it sits happy when you close that box. In a perfect world, you seal that subwoofer and the air inside of it never leaves and no new air comes in until you throw it into the dump. You always wonder what happens to these things when you're done with them. I've never, could you imagine one on the back of a fucking garbage truck? And what that means is not only is the magnet structure attempting to center that driver, but the volume of air is actually physically telling it, it's pushing it, no, go back to where you belong. Oh no, go back to where you belong. And that means it's faster. It's faster to return to center. It's faster to react, but you need more power. It's this, it's this same game we play where, oh, you want extension and control. Well, the control is handled by being a sealed driver in a box. Boom. The extension is handled by, well, put muck to fucking more power. Just keep sho shoveling power into it until it moves exactly as far and fast as you want. And here you go. Uh, I, I have no wants for any more power going into this unit than this. So, yeah. Now, moving on from movies, let's throw on a little music. Because like I just said, music. Because movies need that crazy explosion, brah, shake your house. And that'll do it. But music... Tofu's in the lounge. Music... And Mina is not what I want to hear. Oh, wait, hold on a second. I should probably put this back to where it's going to actually play music. I hope this doesn't blow up. Please don't blow up. Direct mode. So this is channels. This is just just my here and I should leave that there. And I put that up because I always find that when you go from movies to music, the sulfur just needs to be pushed a little bit more. And I would actually physically get up and turn the knob two notches if I was integrating that. Which is rare because these speakers are stupid. But now let's take it out of direct. We'll replay that whole opening. And that is, by the way, Mickey Hart Erto Flora Pirum The Gates of Daphos. And I got this off of, um, who's the guy that rebuilds the uh, JBLs in Japan? Him. I would see his name of his channel. Uh, no, we want to go to music. We want to go to stereo. So now, these are cut off at, I have it set to 60 hertz. So 60 hertz and above, you take over. 60 hertz and below, that's your job now. Mistake. Soundtrack. I 
Music sounds exactly the same when it's just coming out of a subwoofer. It's like every Honda Civic in Philadelphia. So what song is he playing? You know the one that goes boom. That one. That's so fucking annoying. Oh god. I have to just I have to lower something. I have to I have to not. There's just noises happening back there. Now, granted, I've done a wonderful job of making it just a fucking disaster for noises to transmit. But the fact that it's still doing it. All right, we need, we need to cover that sound up. I'm a bad audiophile. All right, here's, your, here's an option that I, I, I hadn't considered. If you bought two of those, I've lost you already, except for the crazy ones. If you bought two of those, two, that would cost you 500 bucks. You're building one, so you may as well build two. You could even do it with one set of clamps, one at a time. You build them together, all right? You follow me? Because you see my infinities down here? When I sell this unit, when I sell this unit, and I'm gonna miss it, but it's, I, I don't have the patience to finish it. My friend, he promised me he would actually go through the, like the finishing process of it, try to either do a fabric wrap or something, or do a full automotive paint job on it. I'm all for it. When that's gone, those two 10 inch um, infinities are getting reamped with this. Because the amplifier unit and one of them went bad, and if I fix it, it's great. If I can't fix it, I'm just going to yank both amps out, seal the back, and I'm going to use the fucking crown to push two 10-inch. Because it's going to push it in stereo, and just give it the thing, and a mini DSP, and fuck you! That's why. That's why. So, two is always my choice. I, I'm, I'm, I'm human. I have a little, I have a little two-bedroom apartment, all right, that I love. And I, I've managed to shoehorn a fucking 104 inch diagonal 235 to one projection screen into it, mounted to the wall, and I, can, I have like 15 pairs of speakers and headphones, and I managed to still have a space to lay down and make snow angels on the dirt. And if I could have two of those, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Because here's, what, here's my thinking, here's my thinking. You follow me? You buy two of these, you buy the bigger version of this amplifier, the 2502, which I'll, I'll, this is gonna be a real hard sell because it's huge, but there's, there's lunatics out there. I've seen your home theaters. Two of these, the 2502, you run it in stereo. The, so you'll be throwing whatever, slightly less power than a, I mean, you can get two of these also, but I'm trying to work it out. So that's $500 plus the more expensive one is another $500. It's a thousand dollars, thousand dollars, would get you two of these 
set up there. And one amplifier you could leave in your rack. I'm assuming you'll have racks too. Giggity. That you run speaker cable to. Speaker cable doesn't pick up interference. You have to run that next to 110 for like 100 feet before you get like a, a 60 hertz. And then you won't, you'll overpower that in a heartbeat. Just move it away. Could you? My doom stacks here. Here are my doom stacks, right? Downward firing 8 inch Martin Logans. Now take what I've done there. And be an absolute asshole. Two of those for the base. Uh, you'd obviously need to use three entire pieces of Mitsumi aluminum, just three, just to, for scale's sake. And you put a giant pizza wheel on top, and plop your speakers down, and it'll just like fucking Jabba the Hutt stereo. That's what Jabba the Hutt would use as his stereo. It would be two 15 inch Ultimaxes, and again, music, tight, fast, responsive. You don't need 12 hertz in music. You need 20 hertz in music, and that will do it all fucking day. I'm going to hit the shuffle button. Here we go. Anyway. Yeah. You're at, people, have been, people have been begging me for this review. I, I, begging. Pleading. When are you going to review the Ultimax? Where's the Ultimax? To so the point where it's like, it's be, this has become the Half-Life 3 of reviews. Because I, I used the thing as a fucking unbuilt table for like nine months. Just had my computer sitting on it. And then I built it, I don't even know, was it a year ago? And then it sat in the corner there. And I just like, because I didn't have the amp. And I'm like, oh, my amps don't fucking power it. So then I finally bought the amp. And I started playing with the amp. And the amp is great. But I had to build a cable. And so now we're here. We're 31 minutes into this review. Did I nail it? We're 31 minutes into this review. And I'm finally like, okay. This is completely worth the time and effort, but you got to finish it. I, I don't have the ability to, I don't have a room where I could just like tarp it up and just spray paint this, or I could guess like a roller paint it, but I would want to get the router out and route this edge a little bit less square and, or wrap it in denim with a little bit of, um, yoga mat cut out slightly less than the edges so that it's soft and malleable. Oh. Here's what's going to happen, though. Because you think this review is over. And you're watching this review on YouTube. And you're like, well, that's it. He did the Ultimax. What's next? This is what's next. Earthquake, which is a brand that makes subwoofers as well. Including the little baby one. Uh, have this. Pump. It's the 12 pump. with The pump 12. And the instructions are inside of it. And this separates like a clamshell. You cut a hole this big into a sealed subwoofer. This is designed for car subwoofers. Like they're, it's designed for sealed subwoofers to add a port. But you see, you can't just add a port like that. The boxes are not designed, that box is a specific size and the port is a specific diameter and length to allow for the speaker to do its things. And how do you, how do, you do that? Well, here you go. Here's um, literally a lollipop. It doesn't stick, it doesn't go on top like this. I mean, I guess it could. This goes physically inside the box. So I'm going to probably cut a hole here. This will clamshell apart so I can get it together and then I guess reassemble it. I honestly have no idea how this goes together. But this is going to be inside of this, maybe here. And now this is going to go in and this is going to squeeze these sides and it's going to shit out fucking air that way. So it's not an actual hole, it's a passive radiator. and. They're just making it this big estimated double 12 inch with these big fucking foam surrounds. And whatever happens, happens, in the words of Spike Spiegel. So if I ruin this subwoofer by putting this port, uh, this earthquake pump in there, so be it. Just take it out, patch the hole. That's the great part about a sealed subwoofer. You go experiment. So cheap, you go fucking experiment. It's a piece of MDF. We're going to cut a hole in it. We're going to pop that son of a bitch in there. And according to the documentation, this should add six decibels of gain in a certain range. <laughs> That's dumb. That's dumb. With the lisp and everything. Because I'm like it's shaking my kitchen apart right now, so I don't know what else it could possibly do. 
Looks cool like that. I mean, and you could probably put it actually like that as well, but I'm not going to. No. No. Flow from my heart to my soul. Watch the energy flow. I swear to Christ, literally everything, and it might even be more than like the the SVS, and that doesn't make any sense to me. But everything's making noise, unless this place is falling apart. Like it's been broken in real bad. That's the negative 20 light showing up, by the way. Not even the negative 10, just negative 20. That's so dumb. It's so dumb. Some of us are dumb. Why do we do this? <laughs> Watch the energy flow. Ah, hope these microphones are doing their job today. So, I mean, what are we left? What's left to discuss? Putting it together wasn't hard because if I can do it, anyone can do it because I'm an idiot. So if I could put it together decently and neatly and I paint a whole video on how to do it, you screw it together, you do whatever you want to do with an amplifier, you wire it up, you can get standard. Hell, you could actually just drill small holes and wire a five-way binding post straight through the wood. You don't even need to cut a hole. Just a screw hole, saw it. Eighth inch, nut and bolt, and you're done. It's dumb. This is an easy, this is an easy yes. But, you need an amplifier that can push it. And you need to finish it. Finishing is the hard part. The making it not look like a big MDF box. If you live in the ghetto, or you live in a beautiful house, and you're okay with MDF, you two people can come together. The, the upper class and the lower class could just come together with their cheap ass subwoofers looking like MDF boxes. Or you figure out how to fucking make it not look like this. Because that's my problem. It looks like this. Doesn't take much to fix. Get a can of paint. Roll it on there. Fucking roll it on there. But I have other subwoofers. Rhythmic contacted me a while back. It's like, hey, we make an 18 inch now that's not under watts. And I sort of scratched my face and went, that's nice. Why? Because I know what's going to happen. A subwoofer is going to show up and I'm going to die pushing up the steps. So in order to facilitate that happening, which I know some of you are really interested in seeing, that has to get out of here. So I'm selling that to my friend. I'm going to put the port thing into it. I'll do another little mini review in a couple weeks because I, now I have inspiration to finish this and get it the fuck out of here. It's like, man, I need this subwoofer. I, I, I sold him the JBL Studio 530s, one of my extra pair. Actually, my only extra pair of Studio 530s. But he's he's done a lot of work for me, and I'm just like, I gotta pay this guy back. So, here you go. Keep welding shit to my car. And now I'm selling him this, and it's just gonna complete his whole fucking life. Thomas Dolby. We know what song we wanna hear, right? Is there any bass in the song? Tell me about your childhood. Must have took me for a fool. Is that chuck me out of school? This is just becoming a sound demo now. Okay, so I think it works fucking absolutely fine for movies. You're not gonna for a sealed it works fine. There'll still be greater extension on a on a pet a ported. That's just the way of the world. So I usually say if you're doing just home theater, get a ported. This will still work. Two of these, and then you don't have to worry about nothing. And the same with music. Music, you can get one, sure. I don't like it there for music. I would do it, if you had to do music, which I'm currently doing, I would yank this bitch out again. Come on, bitch. You my bitch. I'd put it dead, I mean, this is like OCD Zeos now, where he puts the subwoofer dead center of the room. Don't 
smash your screen and then you can actually go raise the fucking rates and everything. <laughs> Once you put a subwoofer, by the way, in the middle, I mean, I try to be like normal Z. I try to be Z Reviews, the guy who's there to help normal people out. But really, I want to be the guy who helps the fucking crazy people out. I want someone, I, I'm okay with divorce. Divorce is fine. It's fucking grand, you know why? Because once you're divorced, you could do this sort of shit. You could just put, just, just wheel the subwoofer out, dead center, because I was listening to the music. Because once you're sitting, here, which is where, oh, sorry about that. Then there's no worry about where the subwoofer is coming from. Because over there, if you put the subwoofer up too high to 100 hertz, it's locatable. You're going to hear there's where the subwoofer is. So you got to keep the, the frequency response that it's outputting much, much lower. 75, 80 is like the limit. But when you put a subwoofer there in the middle of what you're listening to, it's fine. You could, 100 hertz could come out of that, and it doesn't matter, because it's in the middle of the sound stage. It's not going to affect anything negatively. Come on. Mr. Robot soundtrack. That honestly sounds great. Because those are being caught up at 60. 60's coming out of there, it's dead center. I'm in the middle of the room, I'm too far back. I pushed my couch back, but I mean, this is still... play like this. All right, so I'm ending this fucking review because it, it starts off and I'm a little bit like summer and then it gets into it and I'm like, oh, fuck it. It's a Z review. They'll stay and watch anything I do and talk about and I get relaxed again. And now I want to, why is that in focus? That's better in focus than that. I got to climb a fucking ladder and focus my goddamn projector. And you know why it's out of focus? Can anyone figure out why a spinning thing in my seat? Because a fucking subwoofer is fucking with it. God damn it, I hate subwoofers, but I'm gonna go back to listen to the glitch mode mixtape because I have 40 minutes and you guys don't. So go online, find the uh, crush mode mixtape from Glitch Mom and be inspired to listen to the entire thing with a massive subwoofer. <laughs>